traveling here with Dan Kilbridge, Breslin Center, full court press after home overtime game number three this season. Michigan State goes a decade without a home win. Now all they want to do is play overtime. Right, three out of the last four home games too, but uh, shot their free throws well at the end, got it done, got some rebounds near the final seconds, and uh, now Michigan State's walking on air, I guess, for uh, the first time in a while here. Michigan State somehow five and four. It looked pretty dim for most of the night. Michigan State down 24 to 12, and then came back and had a 15 to two run. Got the lead back briefly, and then Indiana in control for much of the second half. Could have been the darkest weekend in Michigan State basketball history in some people's minds. Certainly in terms of the regular season, to have your roster depleted, and then have a loss at home to Michigan for the first time, I say since 1994, if you count the vacated games. And then to come in here and uh, almost lose to an Indiana team, but this team refused to say the season is over just yet. Yeah, and it felt kind of like that Michigan game for much of the second half. Indiana shot pretty well, shot on fire to start the game. They were seven of nine from three point range in the first half. Shot just under 50% of the game. Uh, Hulls made some shots from uh, past the NBA range, I think. And Michigan State just had some open looks, couldn't get it to fall. They would get it to within three and couldn't quite get over the hump until the very end there when uh, Draymond Green got the rebound off Kalen Luke's mess. Made both of his free throws uh, in a very intense pressure situation, sent it to overtime. Indiana did what it could, and Michigan State finally realized that Christian Watford could hit a three-point shot. Matt Roth, one of the most amazing players you'll ever find in college basketball, he does not have a turnover this season. Of course, all he ever does is catch it and shoot it, or wait and hand it back to the point guard. But still, when you're this far into the season, you gotta have at least one turnover. And Michigan State finally able to win despite losing Delvon Road to foul trouble. I thought for a minute, uh, Draymond Green was gonna follow him there and that would have been the end. But down the stretch, so many exciting plays. Uh, the timeout that was called, we don't know if there was possession of the ball or not, but Indiana almost got that last shot. Uh, better look, they did not put any time back on the clock, and Jordan Hulls had no choice but just to keep it up. Yeah, it was kind of a loose ball what happened there. Hulls ran into Knicks, and he went down pretty hard. That's uh, it's just pure physics right there. That's gonna happen every time. Ball's a little loose, they get a timeout off and get a good look at it. But uh, speaking of Knicks, I thought he was maybe yeah. the difference in the game today, yeah. because you look at the Michigan game, and Kalen Lucas and Summers scored, which they did today, got a lot of production from the guards offensively, but they got that presence in the post from Knicks. Uh, season high nine points, he just did some very good things. Not the best on defense at all times, but really just to get in there, uh, play a lot of minutes. I know he's been putting in a ton of work after practice to get his conditioning up, and uh, he, he was really the X factor in the difference, I thought, today. Derek Nix does not have to be Jared Sullivan for this team to make a quantum leap, but he has to be a much better player. He has to be a presence. He was today, Michigan State, has seen Derek Sherman regress since early in the season. Gotten virtually nothing out of Adrian Payne. So they're going to need some sort of post presence there. They get a little bit out of Del Monroe, but not much. And he has to play such an important defensive role that they can't expect a lot of offense from him. But when the game is there to be won, who was in the low post? Raymond Green. Absolutely, as we mentioned, grabbed the rebound, got his way to the free throw line, just like he did at the end of the Northwestern game, uh, sort of putting the team on his back at this point. He missed some big shots, and then he came back and he was able to make those, and um, you know, it's just uh, what a leader does, I guess, in the game's final minutes. Hit those two free throws at the end of regulation, or we wouldn't be standing here with any kind of smile on our face, but at this point, Michigan State now uh, still some very severe challenges coming up, and they're going to have to finish 500 in the Big Ten, I think, at this point, to have a shot, unless they plan to make a long run in the Big Ten tournament. Right, nothing looks easy anymore. There don't look to be any more automatic wins on the schedule, unless MSU can figure it out uh, in a hurry here to play a full game. Iowa coming up in a midweek game on the road, followed by a trip to the Kohl Center. We know what that's like. Jack Eblin here with Dan Kilbridge from Breslin Center. The final score in overtime, Michigan State 84, Wisconsin 83 for Spartan Tailgate at 24-7 Sports.